This just in, breaking news, our top story tonight. The Hustler $1 million cash game is in full swing with two days in the books. This has been one of the all time most viewed poker events that's ever happened on YouTube. With countless viewers tuning in, people took to social media to let everyone know what a great time they were having watching this game. I'm just fucking around, they were complaining again. They're always complaining. Next up, day one of the million dollar game berated for being too tight. My takeaway? I'd like to see what games look loose. JRB has just five bet to 200,000. Maybe day one of the cash game was a little more snug, but day two was anything but. And in day two, the million dollar buy-in featured an exclusive discount of the low, low, low price of $500,000. That's right. Tune in now for our special million dollar buy-in game for a $500,000 discount. You might be asking, why did they drop the million dollar stakes? Well, you might've been hoping for a million dollar buy-in, but sometimes you have to go down under. <laughs> wow, that was... <laughs> That was something on my list. Also tonight, Mickey drops out of the million dollar cash game and a Reddit sleuth figured out that the check that he posted on Reddit was actually a check from a couple of years ago in 2021. The internet remains undefeated. And finally tonight, Brad Owen final tables a WPT event. What place did he get? You're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. Did Brad walk away victorious? or will he be owing you an apology? All this and more tonight on Polgar News. Oh, is that because my last name starts with... Before we get going, tomorrow I will be going on Hustler Casino Live and buying in for $1 million, and I'm gonna be looking to play some pots. I tweet about this on Twitter the other day, saying what my game plan was. I'm gonna be re-raising a lot. I'm gonna be playing loose, I'm gonna be playing aggressive. Look, I know there's been a lot of tight play. I know people are, are they don't wanna get stacked. I know it's a lot of money. I'm coming to this game to play some big ass pots. So if you want to see this game get kicked up a notch, I'll see you over at Hustler on Monday. Let's kick things off with our non-million dollar cash game story. Brad Owen final table to WT event. And he got fourth. With that story behind us, let's move on and talk about the million dollar cash game. So much, so much to get into. But I want to kick this off with talking about the overall spectacle that I've seen so far. This game has had incredible, incredible viewership. Day one, it peaked around 41,000 viewers. Day two, I think it was 26, 27,000, something in that vicinity. So thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people are tuning in to watch this, these games, which does, is not something that happens on YouTube all that often. For some context at the Lodge, our biggest game maybe had 11 or 12,000 concurrence. This is a humongous game. Uh, the Poker Go game, I think, had more in the, in the 20,000 range. I forget now. It's tough with them because they had some on platform, some off. However you want to dice this up, this is one of the all-time most viewed live streams for poker, if it's not number one. Both of the games we've had so far were very different, and I want to talk about each one of them separately. So the first game and second game had a good amount of overlap, overlap in terms of players. Both games had JRB. Both games had Tony G. Both games had Rob Young. Both games had Blank Jet Ben and both games had Charles. So, so both games actually had a good core group. A couple different guys thrown in there. We saw uh, Brandon Stevens in there day one, Stanley Tang in there day one, Alan Keating in there day one. Uh, and then day two, we saw a couple of new names. Huss was in there, Ozzy Matt was in there, and uh, Nick Airball got in there too. So uh, primarily the same lineups, but the games did seem to play kind of differently. Day one, we saw everyone buy in for a million dollars, and day two, we saw most players other than Rob Young buying in for just 500K. And because of that difference, we were able to see a lot more pots get all in on the second day. But that's something that we should certainly be expecting. When you have a 501K game with a million dollar buy-in, even with a 2K big blind ante, it's still so many big blinds that you get pre-flop that players are simply put just going to be a lot tighter in terms of getting all of their money in. The reason's simple. If you make the blinds really low and the buy-in huge, you're just not going to have a lot of all-ins. So if you view all-in poker as being very fun, well, you might want to consider watching some tournaments. But that said, if you like cash games with all-ins, that format is not going to be conducive, which is why if we wanted lots of all-ins, we should up the blinds and made this game 2K, 4K or something like that. Maybe that game is simply just too big. I don't know. But the point of the matter is, if you watch a million dollar cash game with the blinds being 501K with a 2K big one ante, it's kind of unlikely you're going to see a lot of all-ins. 
and players have to play in a sophisticated manner where they understand the repercussions of bets and raises that open themselves up to getting put into very difficult spots. In a lot of situations in poker, one player can have the nuts and the other cannot, and those situations when you're very, very, very deep can become treacherous, and players have to think about that when they're making their strategy. I personally don't think that makes the game boring. Now, I do think there's a point of blinds where it just gets too absurd and too ridiculous. You know, I had a spot the other day in the lodge where I had to fold King's preflop because of how deep I was with another player. That stuff's going to happen when you get super deep, but you also get to think about poker in a different way where you're more polarized and you can run some pretty sick, crazy bluffs on people because they get way more capped and because the number of big blinds you can put in is just simply so much pressure. As for the results of the two days, day one ended with Charles as the big winner up 400k, Blank Check Ben won 300k, and Brandon Stevens won 260. The big losers on the day were Rob Young losing 200,000, and Alan Keating losing 600,000, definitely the lion's share of the losses. Day two, we saw a uh, little more blood in the streets, even though the buy-in was smaller. 650k win for Huss, 500k win for JRB, 300k win for Tony G., and our losers list, Blank Check Ben lost 230K, Ozzy Matt lost a cool half million, and Charles lost 914K. Not quite a minus $1 million session, but definitely encroaching on it. But what about the VPIPs? Day one, we saw that players did seem to be slightly, slightly tighter, coming in at more like the low 40s for VPIP. And day two was slightly looser because Ozzy Matt was in the mix. But all in all, both of these games seem pretty loose. I wouldn't say that there was a crazy difference in the looseness between them. So this begs the question, was it really that much tighter on day one than day two? And sure, post-flop, there were some situations players played a bit more timidly. But I don't think that was because of the fact that they were deep. I think it's because of the fact that they just didn't want to have to fire for that much money in some of these spots. Going to be honest, guys, in these lineups, there are a lot of players that are not super, super aggressive players. Not to say that they're bad players by any stretch of the imagination, but if you want hyper aggro dudes, this really isn't the exact lineup you're looking for. In fact, in my opinion, a lot of pro poker players that you're more familiar with, those guys are going to be much more aggressive because they recognize they have to go win more pots and bluff more often and fight tooth and nail. Whereas as you get into more business guy games, that tends to be a bit different. Now, I will say that the normal games on Hustler do play a good amount more loose than this in terms of what people are willing to stack off with, but we do see the stakes start to matter. When you have a million dollars, that will impact your thinking, and the amount of money just becomes real to people in the game. This is where I have a quick bone to pick with Rob Young, who's been shit-talking me, selling 75% of my action in this game. Have you seen Duke Polk? What, what did he say? Duke Polk's tweeted, high-stakes poker... Uh, Hustler, it's, it's weak l allowing people to buy in for 500k. Oh, totally. Yeah. The guy will come here with a million. Someone told me that he sold 75% himself. Maybe it's not true. Well, he said it himself. He did he? He did. He did. So, he so he's basically buying in for like 250k, right? I really find it condescending people to, you know, this is big money, right? If I'm going to come play a million dollar game, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring a bunch of money, I'm going to play my game, I'm going to play aggressive, and I'm not going to put myself in spots where I'm afraid to go all in. A lot of these guys are clearly trying to balance themselves and not put their money at risk. If I play in a game, every chip is in play, period. And so if I'm going to go play a million dollar cash game, then yes, I'm not afraid to say that I can only afford to have a quarter million dollars of my own money at stake per buy-in. Oh, you got me, guys. I'm probably the most poor person at this table and could only afford a paltry quarter million dollar buy-in. There are so many people in poker that try and look more rich than they are and try and pretend to be the big shot and try and pretend they got bags and bags of money. Look, I'm just going to shoot it straight with you. I've always done that. When I won the one drop, I said at what percentage of myself I had there. I've always been straightforward with my audience. I'm not as rich as a lot of these guys, and I'm also not a gambling degenerate like no names in particular. So I'm just going to do my thing. I'm going to play good poker. I'm going to play aggressive. I'll be great for the show, but I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. I mean, I'm not, frankly, even in the inner circle. You're on the outs. You're not a part of the in group. One day, a man can dream. Talking about day two, lowering the buy-in to 500K from a million, because this is the thing Rob was really arguing with me about. Here's, here's the bottom line. I have no problem with a 250k buy-in. I have no problem with a 500k buy-in. I have no problem with a 5k buy-in. I have no problem with any of these things. I'm not trying to say that it needs to be a million dollars for me to sit down and play poker. Here's my issue. 
And I love Hustler Goes Hino Live. They do the best job of any stream by far. They have an incredible show. This is an incredible event. They have great commentary. I, I mean, the list of things they do right goes on and on. But I mean, specifically this one issue, if you're going to advertise a game as a $1 million buy-in game for months, and then you get a player in the game around the time it's running, we're like, oh, we can get a player that's good action for the game. Let's make it $500,000 instead. It is no longer a million dollar cash game. That is my only point. If you're going to advertise as a million dollar cash game and then drop it because someone's in the area, like what happens if on my day and Monday, Phil Helmuth's in the area and he's only got 400K? Huh? What if Tom Dwan walks by, but he's only got 612K in Ethereum? What if Phil Ivey wants to play, but he's only got $286,000 in his box? I mean, where are we going to draw? The Is this a million dollar cash game or not? I'm not trying to big time anyone. I'm not trying to say that poker has to be for millions. I'm per, I'm just saying if this game is going to be advertised as a million dollar cash game, then it should be a million dollar cash game and not a 500k because we got a guy it's a live one. Very passionate about these subjects, guys, as you can probably tell. Moving on, let's talk about this Mickey situation. So Mickey was announced as a player in the million dollar cash game a a few months ago. Uh, you guys might be familiar with Mickey from playing on Hustler a couple of times and his Baccarat stories. We did a Baccarat bit the other day on this channel. Mickey was supposed to play the million dollar game a couple days before he announced that because Hustler is not meeting his demands, he is not going to play. This strikes me as bullshit because I know Nick and I know Ryan. I don't know what's going on with Mickey behind closed doors, but I think it's pretty common knowledge that Hustler Casino Live does not pay players to play on their show. So what demands is Mickey making that says, pay me my money. I I can't imagine a scenario they're paying him to play or anyone to play. So this just does not make sense to me. It seems like he's trying to save face in some fashion because it is a million dollar buy-in game. Wait, hold on. How much has Mickey got? Hundred. He's got 118? 118K on Monday? Guys, breaking news, breaking news. Monday's game is now the 118K buying. Wait, hold on. Mr. Dr. Batman has 80K? Breaking news, this just in. Hustler Casino Live's million dollar cash game on Monday will be an exclusive $80,000 buy-in. Wait, hold on. How much did Jamie Gold have? Expanding on the, the Mickey post, he posted a picture of the check showing the million dollars ready to go. And I love the internet. A sleuther went through and found that the signature on that check came from the person that worked at Chase two years ago. And so this check has to be at least a couple years old, which means this is not a check that was for the million dollar game, but is instead an old check that is being used or forged or something to show that he would play, but reality is he probably does not have the money. My take on the whole Mickey thing from the get-go, it's just been a little weird to me. I don't know the Baccarat situation. My understanding is you can't really beat that game without some kind of edge sorting tactics like we saw with the Phil Ivey case. Regardless, I don't know Mickey at all. But I can say that I do not have any belief that Hustle Casino Live promised him something that, and then reneged. I just, I just personally can't see it. Moving on. It wasn't just Ozzy Matt that was going to play and then canceled. It was also Pepe who was going to play and then was upset about some comments made about him being in the import-export business made by Veronica Brill on Nick Vertucci's show, and he also withdrew, withdrew and has said he is not going to be playing in the future. So we've had a good number of players drop out of the show over the course of the last few weeks. We have seen, or rather last few days, Eric Person dropped out, maybe in tangent with his new deal at Live at the Bike. Uh, we've saw, um, we've seen a lot of other guys drop out. Haralibus dropped out. Shamath dropped out a, a little while ago, to, as far as I understand. A good number of players, of course, Mickey, of course, Pepe. Uh, we have a good number of guys who have dropped out, including Tony G that dropped out and then dropped back in. I mean, this guy's kind of been all over the place. Before we go, I want to say that I think overall this stream has been awesome, and I'm getting sick and tired of people complaining about every poker show. Where does it end? They're either too loud, or they're too quiet, or they're too deep, or they're too shallow, or the stakes are too small, or the stakes are too big, or the players are annoying, or the players have no personality, or the play is too tight, or the play is not serious enough, or the play isn't good, or the play is too good. Or the what, what, where are we at, guys? And, and I really want you just to take a step back. Can we just enjoy things sometimes? Can we just look at a game and say, 
It's poker. They're getting cards and they're doing some stuff. And we get so lost and caught up in, is this the same as high stakes poker from 11 years ago? Well, no, this is a 10 hour live stream of people that are way less well known than the people that were at the top during the heyday of poker. Guess what? Those days are gone and there were good days. We'll all remember the Tom Dwan bluffs. We'll all remember the Brad Booth bricks. Those things will be iconic poker stories forever. And just because the ones today might not meet those expectations, and also because the audience today is probably a decent amount smaller than the absolute peak during the uh, pre-Black Friday era, the point remains, it's still a lot of fun poker. We saw many pots that were over a half million dollars. How often do you get to see that? We saw players bitch about standing in the stand-up game for what seemed like 17 hours. That's what I'm talking about. I want to hear if you should stand or not in the stand-up game for the 17th time. That's poker. I'll, 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 <clears throat> all jokes aside, these guys had fun. They gambled. They played loose. They played tight. They played a lot of hands. The format was anti-structure. We saw some big moves. We saw some big hands. We saw some reasonably big bluffs. And we saw people get stacked. That's poker. Stop trying to make it into some perfect little box where it needs to be this, this, and that, and checking this off. And like, hmm, elbow's too pointy. Okay, guess what? The elbows were a little pointy. That's poker. It's not some beautiful painting. It's just more like modern art. You look at it and you're like, I see some shit in there. And you just try and have a good time. That's what I'm going to be doing. So if you want to see me, stop by Hustler Casino Live on Monday. I'm going to be locked and loaded, ready to go. I'm headed to Los Angeles, baby. Let's go.